Hello, and welcome to the Drug Discovery World podcast, a podcast covering topics around drug discovery and development, pharma and biotech. My name is Giles, and I'm here to take you through this episode. Today's episode is taken from a fall 2018 issue, and is titled, Current Trends in RNA-Based Therapeutic Development. The article is written by Dr. Zhao Kai Wu and Dr. Andrew P. Turnbull. So now on to the main article. Current Trends in RNA-Based Therapeutic Development. Cellular RNAs play crucial roles during disease progression, and represent a diverse and largely untapped class of biomolecules that can be exploited for drug development. RNA species include messenger RNAs, mRNAs, that are translated into proteins, long non-coding RNAs, including transfer RNAs, tRNAs, and ribosomal RNAs, rRNAs, and small non-coding RNAs, such as microRNAs, miRNAs, and small interfering RNAs, siRNAs. Exploiting RNA species as therapeutic agents offers new opportunities for drug developers, and the possibility to develop agents against undruggable genes and gene products. Furthermore, new screening tools now make it easier to target disease-associated RNA sequences. However, developing RNA-based therapeutics is not without its challenges, since RNA is inherently unstable and prone to degradation by active and abundant ribonucleases, is potentially immunogenic, and may require a delivery vehicle for efficient and specific transport to target cells and across the lipid bilayer. These development hurdles have largely been overcome by chemically modifying RNA to enhance its stability, and by employing synthetic carriers such as lipid nanoparticle, LNP, or polymer-based nanoparticle, PNP, systems for RNA drug delivery. RNA drug development efforts have primarily focused on four modalities. 1. mRNA vaccines for cancer and infectious disease. 2. In vitro transcribed, IVT, mRNAs, to replace or supplement proteins. 3. Antisense RNAs, or RNA interference, RNAi, via miRNAs and siRNAs, to partially or completely turn off gene expression. And 4. RNA aptamers, or chemical antibodies, which bind to specific molecular targets and can act as drug carriers to deliver small molecule chemotherapeutics, siRNAs, miRNAs, or nanoparticles into targeted tissues. These efforts have led to the therapeutic potential of RNA drugs being realized, with the RNA aptamer, pegaptinib, representing the first FDA approval for an RNA-based drug in 2004. Since then, two antisense RNAs and one siRNA drug have gained FDA approval. As of July 2018, 69 companies have mRNA, antisense RNA, RNAi, or RNA aptamer therapeutics in clinical development, with 315 ongoing clinical trials. Furthermore, several strategic collaborations and partnerships have been forged between big pharma and biotech companies to leverage proprietary technology platforms. For example, Arbutus Biopharma Corporation, which has proprietary LNP and ligand conjugate delivery technologies, recently entered into an agreement with Royvent Sciences to launch Genovent Sciences. New modalities to target RNA are also being developed, including the application of CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing technology, and the development of selective small molecule modulators of RNA, or RNA modifying enzymes. The global RNA drugs market is forecast to exceed $10 billion by 2024, highlighting the significant commercial potential of this emerging class of therapeutics. Development hurdles. Despite this potential benefit of RNA therapeutics, efficient and safe delivery remains a significant challenge. There are a number of significant issues that need to be overcome in their development. Instability and immunogenicity, rapid clearance from the blood by the kidneys and liver scavenger receptors, and cellular uptake and endosomal escape. These hurdles can be overcome by chemically modifying RNA, 
and by using improved synthetic delivery carriers. Chemical modification. mRNAs can be stabilized by incorporating naturally occurring modified nucleosides, including pseudoridine, which represents one of the most abundant post-transcriptional RNA modifications, and the more recently identified 5-methylcytidine triphosphate, M5-CTP, N6-methyladenosine 5 triphosphate, M6-ATP, 2-thiouridine triphosphate, S2-UTP, N6-methyladenosine, M6A, and N6-2-odimethyladenosine, M6AM. In addition, a 5-cap, optimized 3-poly-A tail, and 5 or 3 untranslated regions can be added, or the mRNA can be codon-optimized to improve translational efficiency. Modified mRNAs can reduce immunogenicity and increase protein expression levels compared with unmodified mRNA. The most common chemical modifications that have been incorporated to enhance the stability of RNAi and antisense RNA drugs are phosphorothioate RNA backbone modifications and ribose modifications, including 2-amethyl, 2-fluoro, and 2-O-methylethyl substitutions. These modifications enhance the stability of the RNA drug and provide protection from nuclease degradation. Furthermore, the new chemistries confer drug-like properties to RNA, reduce immune stimulation, maximize on-target potency, and prolong the duration of the drug. Delivery RNA-based therapeutics must be delivered to the target cell and enter the cell to be active. Overcoming delivery of RNAs across the lipid bilayer and into cells remains a major challenge. Furthermore, once internalized, the endocytic pathway, a major cellular active uptake mechanism for agents too large to permeate passively, leads to entrapment in the endosome and subsequent degradation in the lysosome. For example, only 0.1% to 2% of siRNAs evade degradation and reach the RNAi machinery in the cytosol. New in vivo RNA delivery technologies, including LNP or PNP systems, and the use of aptima or antibody conjugation, have overcome some of the challenges associated with delivery of RNA-based therapeutics, with the selection of delivery system depending on the therapeutic properties, type of target cell, and desired delivery route. For example, LNPs tend to end up in the liver, which has been exploited at Alnalam Pharmaceuticals, Dicerna Pharmaceuticals, and Arrowhead Pharmaceuticals Incorporated, by attaching N-acetylgalactosomanine, GAINAC, to sRNAs, to specifically target the hepatic acyloglycoprotein receptor on liver cells and trigger internalization. Improving endosome escape is another key step. The most common approaches are to use endosomalytic agents such as fusogenic peptides and polymers to enhance endosomal escape of siRNAs. Classes of RNA-based therapeutics RNA-based therapies can be classified according to their mechanism of action and include single-stranded mRNAs and antisense RNAs, double-stranded miRNAs and siRNAs, and RNA aptimers. RNA-based therapeutics range in size from thousands of bases for mRNAs down to 8 to 50 nucleotides for antisense RNAs and 20 to 25 base pairs for miRNAs and siRNAs. mRNA IVT mRNA is single-stranded and compromises structural features in common with native mRNA, with its bioavailability being determined by RNA degradation delivery, and cytosolic translocation. IVT mRNAs usually incorporate chemically modified nucleosides, such as pseudoridine, which reduce immunogenicity and increase its translational efficiency. Furthermore, the development of improved formulations, for example, the use of LNPs and PNPs, protect IVT mRNAs from RNases and facilitate cellular uptake. IVT mRNA can potentially be used to transiently express proteins to prevent or alter a disease state, with mRNA drugs being developed for cancer immunotherapies and infectious disease, protein replacement, 
and regenerative medicine. mRNA-based protein replacement therapies are used to replace proteins in vivo that are not expressed at a low level, or are non-functional using IVT mRNA. mRNA cancer immunotherapy agents are at advanced stages of development, with first in-man trials underway for mRNA vaccines. Antisense RNA Most current antisense RNAs have been developed from sequences complementary to the target mRNA, and are introduced into cells to reduce or modify expression of the protein upon binding to mRNA to alleviate the symptoms of the disease. Sequence-specific antisense RNAs inhibit gene expression by altering mRNA splicing, arresting mRNA translation, and inducing mRNA degradation by ribonucleases. Previously, natural antisense RNAs were evaluated for gene silencing. However, their inherent instability led to the development of modified antisense RNAs that are either more nuclease resistant but still activate RNA-sage, or bind to RNA without activating RNA-sage. Modified antisense RNAs exhibit significantly improved tissue half-life and prolonged inhibitory activity. To date, two antisense RNA drugs have gained FDA approval, Spinraza and Exondis-51. RNAi, miRNA, and siRNA. The cellular process of RNAi utilizes miRNAs and siRNAs to silence gene expression through post-translational gene silencing or transcriptional silencing. Double-stranded miRNAs and siRNAs bind to mRNA and inhibit protein translation. Endogenous miRNAs induce translational repression and mRNA degradation when the antisense strand displays limited complementarity to the target mRNA, whereas sequence-specific cleavage is exploited by exogenous siRNAs that display perfect or near-perfect base pairing with the mRNA target. miRNA miRNAs are small, non-coding RNAs that play key roles in cell differentiation, proliferation, and survival. The dysregulation of endogenous miRNAs occurs in multiple diseases, including hepatitis, cardiovascular diseases, and cancer. miRNAs are loaded onto the RNA-induced silencing complex, RISC, and interact with partially complementary targets on mRNA to suppress protein expression. Antisense RNAs, complementary to miRNA, can block activity whereas double- or single-stranded RNAs that mimic miRNA can enhance activity. Both miRNA inhibitors and mimics are currently being developed and have shown encouraging results. For example, RG012, by Regulus Therapeutics Incorporated, is an miRNA drug currently being evaluated in Phase 1 trials for the treatment of Alport syndrome. siRNA in contrast to miRNAs, which attenuate protein production, when an siRNA recognizes mRNA, it causes cleavage and degradation of the mRNA and completely silences the gene, shutting down protein production. siRNAs arose as a natural defense mechanism against RNA viruses and are double-stranded RNAs acting as prodrugs. The antisense strand is pharmacologically active, whereas the sense strand facilitates drug delivery transporting the antisense strand to the intracellular argonaut ago loading complex. There are four ago proteins that can be loaded with miRNAs or siRNAs and alter translation and or RNA stability. siRNAs preferentially bind to ago2. siRNAs can also compete with miRNAs loaded onto ago2, thereby altering the half-lives of other cellular RNAs. Exogenous siRNAs operate via a sequence-specific mechanism with perfect complementarity to the target mRNA, but can also have miRNA-like effects on some partially complementary mRNA sequences, leading to a lack of specificity. Therefore, a single siRNA sequence can potentially modulate expression of hundreds of off-target genes, which can impact on the efficacy of the RNA drug. Following systemic injection, siRNAs encapsulated in LNPs 
often tend to accumulate in the liver and spleen. For systematic delivery, synthetic carriers are usually decorated with cell-specific ligands or aptamers that facilitate receptor-mediated uptake. Furthermore, biodegradable nanoparticle carriers allow for slow drug release within the cell to regulate dose. Patisserin, brand name Onpatro by Analam Pharmaceuticals Incorporated, represents the first FDA approval of an RNAi therapeutic in an LNP formulation for hereditary transthyrotin-mediated amyloidosis, HATTR, in adults. RNA aptamers. RNA aptamers are short, single-stranded RNAs that are usually selected in vivo to bind to specific molecular targets using CELEX, Systematic Evolution of Ligands by Exponential Enrichment. RNA aptamers have a propensity to form complementary base pairs, which drives the formation of aptamer target complexes. Aptamers feature the high affinity of antibodies, but also offer several distinct advantages. Their relatively small size and flexibility allow engagement with binding sites and accessible to larger antibodies, improve transport and tissue penetration, quick synthesis and comparatively lower manufacturing costs, and high stability and minimal immunogenicity. Many aptamers are internalized upon binding to cell-specific receptors, making them useful drug carriers to deliver small molecule chemotherapeutics, siRNAs, miRNAs, or antisense RNAs into targeted tissues. However, the inherent physiochemical characteristics of aptamers, which affect metabolic stability and limit in vivo potency, combined with a lack of available safety data, have hindered their development. As with other classes of RNA-based therapeutics, unmodified aptamers are susceptible to nuclease-mediated degradation, leading to very short in vivo half-lives, typically less than 10 minutes. Therefore, most aptamers in clinical development feature chemical modifications to improve nuclease resistance and pharmacokinetic properties. For example, macugen is pegylated and conjugated to polyethylene glycol, PEG, to extend its half-life in vivo. Aptamers can act as antagonists to block protein-protein or receptor-ligand interactions, as antagonists to activate receptors, or as cell-specific delivery systems. All aptamers currently in clinical development are inhibitors that disrupt the function of a target protein. In addition, aptamers can be designed to act as RNA decoys that compete with a natural RNA sequence that represents the target of an RNA-binding protein, sequestering its interaction. In December 2004, Macugen, a VEGF-specific modified RNA aptamer, gained FDA approval for the treatment of age-related macular degeneration, AMD, and several other RNA-based aptamers, or decoys, have entered clinical development. Emerging Technologies New technologies and modalities to target RNA include the application of the CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing technology, DNA-directed RNA interference, DDRNAI technology, and the development of selective small molecule modulators of RNA, or RNA-modifying enzymes. For example, CAL1, Calamune's lead therapeutic candidate, represents an RNA-based gene therapy using DDRNAI to silence the CCR5 gene to control HIV infection, and to protect individuals with HIV from developing AIDS. Several companies that focus on the development of small molecule RNA modulators have been established in recent years. For example, Expansion Therapeutics Incorporated has developed a platform to identify small molecules interacting with RNA, including mRNA and various non-coding RNAs, across multiple therapeutic areas. In addition, Storm Therapeutics specializes in RNA epigenetics and the development of small molecule inhibitors of RNA-modifying enzymes for the treatment of cancer. Targeting splice variant control sequences with introns, non-coding regions of an RNA transcript or DNA sequence within a gene, or exons, coding regions, offers further opportunities to develop therapeutics. For example, Skyhawk Therapeutics Incorporated was founded in 2018 
with a platform to identify selective small molecule modulators of the RNA spliceosome complex that target RNA missplicing, exon skipping, which drives multiple diseases, including neurological conditions and cancer. These emerging technologies offer great opportunities to develop alternative strategies to target RNA for drug development. Marketplace The most notable success for RNA-based therapeutics was the FDA approval of the RNA Aptima, Macugen, for the treatment of AMD in December 2004. Since then, two antisense RNAs and one siRNA have gained FDA approval. Exondis 51, approved in September 2016, is used to treat Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Spinraza, December 2016, represents the first approved drug for the treatment of spinal muscular atrophy in children and adults. Onpatro, in August 2018, represents the first FDA approval of an RNAi therapeutic for HATTR in adults. As of July 2018, 69 companies are actively developing mRNA, antisense RNA, RNAi, or RNA Aptima therapeutics, with 315 ongoing clinical trials. Furthermore, the forecast global sales for RNA-based therapeutics is expected to exceed 10 billion US dollars by 2024. The market has recently witnessed several strategic collaborations and partnerships between big pharma and biotech companies, which leverage proprietary technology platforms. For example, Moderna has established a number of strategic partnerships to advance mRNA medicines. In April 2018, Arbutus Biopharma Corporation which has proprietary LNP and ligand conjugate delivery technologies, and Royvent Sciences entered into an agreement to launch Genovent Sciences, a jointly owned company aiming to develop and commercialize a range of RNA therapeutics targeting genetic disorders with limited or no treatment options available. Genovent plans to develop products both in-house and in industrial partnerships across RNAi, mRNA, and gene editing modalities with the goal of delivering between 5 and 10 RNA programs to the clinic by 2020. In August 2018, BioNTech AG entered into a multi-year research and development collaboration with Pfizer to jointly develop mRNA-based influenza vaccines. These new and exciting strategic collaborations and partnerships will potentially lead to groundbreaking developments in the RNA-based therapeutics field. Outlook RNA-based therapeutics offer opportunities for biotech and pharma companies to go beyond their existing repertoire of small molecule and antibody portfolios. However, the development of RNA-based therapeutics is challenging since RNA is inherently unstable and prone to degradation, is immunogenic and rapidly cleared, and requires safe and effective delivery. The use of RNA modifications to enhance stability and improved synthetic delivery carriers, such as nanoparticle systems, have helped overcome some of these development hurdles. However, delivery across the lipid bilayer remains a significant challenge, and approaches to enhance endosomal escape of RNA drugs are required. To date, four RNA-based drugs, Macugen, Exondis 51, Spinraza, and Onpatro, have successfully made it through to market, and several other RNA agents are currently in clinical programs. In addition, new screening tools are making it easier to identify disease-associated RNA sequences that target. To date, drug discovery efforts are primarily focused on mRNAs, silencing gene expression using antisense RNAs and siRNAs, or developing RNA aptimers that bind to specific molecular targets. Emerging technologies and modalities, including CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing and small molecule modulators of RNA or RNA-modifying enzymes, offer further opportunities to target mRNA for drug discovery. Future advances in RNA therapeutic design and delivery technologies will help exploit the full commercial potential of RNA-based therapeutics. This article was written by Dr. Xiao Kai Wu and Dr. Andrew P. Turnbull. Dr. Xiao Kai Wu is an Associate Principal Scientist at AstraZeneca in the Pharmaceutical Sciences 
IMED Biotech Unit, where she is involved in developing methods for new modalities, including mRNA formulation and analysis. She obtained her PhD in medical biochemistry from the Karolinska Institute in Sweden, and postdoctoral research at the Structural Genomics Consortium at Oxford University. Subsequently, she worked at several biotech companies in Sweden, including IMED AB, Etvax, and Alligator Bioscience AB. Dr. Andrew P. Turnbull is Senior Principal Scientist at CRUK Therapeutic Discovery Laboratories, CRUK TDL, where he established protein crystallography. Previously, he was team leader in the X-ray crystallography group at the Structural Genomics Consortium at Oxford University, and prior to that, worked at the Protein Structure Factory in Berlin in the High Throughput Crystal Structure Analysis Unit located at the Bessie Synchrotron Source. Andrew obtained a PhD in biochemistry from the University of Sheffield. If you've enjoyed this episode, then you can subscribe to Drug Discovery World by visiting our website at ddw-online.com, where you can also view all of our articles, including the references and images, and download the original PDFs. All the links are in the show notes. If you've enjoyed the podcast, then we'd really appreciate a minute of your time to leave us a review, and you can also follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter. Thank you for listening, and we'll hope to see you in our next episode.